Okay, today I'm working on this old Swisher log splitter right here. This 27 ton, 5.5 horsepower, Sam's Club special from, oh, quite, quite a few years ago. Or maybe it was Home Depot. I don't remember. Same thing. Anyway, this was a nice little machine. Uh, it had a Honda engine on it, overhead, uh, overhead valves. What happened to this at one point was that uh, squirrels ate the fuel tank. They gnawed right through the plastic fuel tank. I tried heating it, but that didn't work to fix it. And then I tried epoxy. That didn't work either. So then I put this tank on. This was a brand new tank I had sitting around. And, well, the gas cap got lost. Got lost and it's a little rusty in there. So I'm going to try and get this thing fixed up. Um, I can get another motor for this and replace the whole motor for like $135 from Harbor Freight. And it's a Predator motor. It's supposed to be highly rated. And one good thing about it is it has a metal tank. And then I won't need this one, this tank. Even though this tank, when it's full of gas, will let this wood splitter run probably more than half a day. It can run straight without filling up for half a day. Anyway, my goal is to get this gas tank cleaned up, get the rust out of it with some phosphate, and pull a carburetor off of this motor, and clean it out, and get this thing ready to run. It does have compression, so I think it will start. Been a few years, I don't remember putting this garbage on here. Or these cable ties either. Wonder who else had this apart since me. It's the governor spring. fuel line. It's the 
fuel valve. Still spins. Okay, what else do I need? A pair of cutting pliers. That's a big reason why it won't run right. Putting uh, orange glue right there in a vent hole is a major reason. Jeez. All right. The best way to do this, I think, is to get this one out first. And then. This one's on here with a spring. It's a very light spring, like a hair. It's like a hair. Okay, put this up here so I don't lose it. Perfect. Okay, now this whole thing. Don't really need any of it. I'll take this off from here. Okay, this is it. Gaskets are shot, squished to pieces. Maybe. I should be able to clean this up and get it to work. Let's see if there's anything in the fuel bowl. Let me put this over here. Put all that crap in there. Hmm. Tell me this will run like that. Once it's cleaned out, it'll be fine. But everything's got to be cleaned out. How about the needle valve? Does that work? Yeah, needle valve isn't stuck. It's got lots and lots of garbage in here. Okay, this is what I gotta do is clean this up. Man, is this workbench a mess. Um, I'm gonna take this carburetor that I just took off the wood splitter and put it in this stuff, chem dip and see how it cleans up. But first I gotta take a couple of things off of it, like this hose. See these pliers? Snap on, vacuum grip. They don't make them like this anymore. Literally they don't. So, at some point, somebody borrowed my wood splitter knowing that the carburetor was messed up and they did some work to it and they put orange goop, the orange silicone, high temperature stuff all over everything into the vent cap and everything to 
There's a vent line right there. Or maybe there's not a vent line. Looks like one. Of course, it's drilled here. But anyway, everything goes into this parts basket. I'll put that in there. I'll put this, this thing, it's filthy. Put that in there. The float does not go in there because it's plastic. It'll probably get wrecked. So I'll leave that out. And I'll just pull this pin out like this. That could go in there. And then the float comes apart like so. And the needle valve is attached. The needle valve doesn't go in either. See the needle valve? Just a little tiny needle valve. This controls the flow. This acts like a toilet. The uh, ball cock in the toilet goes up and down. That's what this does, and it maintains a level of fuel in the fuel bowl. So that the carburetor, the vacuum, and the venturi in the carburetor, there's a neck down section in here. And as air is sucked through, it creates a low pressure zone which pulls fuel in through the main jet. That's the main jet right here in this tube. And it gets sucked in, it gets atomized, and it goes through, through past the throttle plate and through into the engine. And this thing's a filthy mess. So I'm going to put the whole body in this chem stuff and let it soak for an hour maybe. And in she goes. Keep this handy right here. And I'll be back. Well, it's been a half an hour. Let's see how they're doing. A couple of dunks. It's hard to tell. Some of the orange stuff is flaking off. Hmm. I'm supposed to wash it in hot water now. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'll take these parts with me. The float. And the needle valve, so I don't lose them. And the gas shutoff valve seems to be a little bit stuck. So let's see what I could do with that. Hmm. Again, now that I'm a retired guy. I'll be able to clean up the shop, clean up this uh, messy bench. A lot of projects have been fixed on this bench. You give it, sometimes you give it a little squeeze, loosens it up. See if this cleans up with a little hot water. Soap and hot water. Poof. Bunch of schmutz came out of there. Hmm. Huh, guess it'll work. All right, I'll see you on the rebuilding bench. Trip in a parts cleaner worked pretty good. Look at this sucker. I've never seen this one so clean. This carburetor would always seem to run lean. 
I had to drill this jet out one time to make it work a little bit better. And so I went to order gaskets and stuff for it. And I uh, looked on Amazon.com. And you know what? You can't even buy a rebuilding kit for it. But you know what you can get is this. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Right here. You can get this. A brand new carburetor. Let's compare them. Make sure it's going to work. Looks the same there. Throttle works the same. This one has a screw to adjust the idle. This one you have to bend the tab right there. You have to bend that tab open to change the idle speed. This one has a screw. This one has a idle jet adjustment. There's a dimple <clears throat> where they could put one if they wanted to, but they didn't. The fuel lines are the same size. That's the same. Huh, look at this. This has jets in here, and there, and there. Does not, no jets. Interesting. So this is a better carburetor. And guess how much for the carburetor? It seems lighter too. You could buy just this carburetor on Amazon for eleven, well twelve dollars. Amazon Prime free shipping plus tax. If you get the gaskets with it, it's a little bit more. If you get it different ways, for eighteen dollars you can get a magneto. A, the gaskets, two spark plugs, and a few lines. I went for 20 bucks and I got the carburetor, a few lines, a spark plug, two fuel filters, some more clamps, and the gaskets. How many gaskets? three gaskets for $18 and on top of that they threw in a new air cleaner housing because the other one was cracked the log fell on it years ago and cracked it so kind of need it air filter sponge filter a whole ball of wax. I needed this stuff anyway. So what's the sense of even trying to rebuild anything? I mean, I have all these nice parts. I still need this. And maybe this bent fuel line might come in handy. But look at it all. The only thing I have to do really is clean this part up. Get some of this glue off of here. razor blade would work better. And then I can go out to the machine and put it together, which is where I'm going next. Here's a tip. If you don't want your gaskets to stick when you put them all together, because a lot of times you want to take stuff apart again for some reason, and you don't want to have to like peel a stick the uh, or make get new gaskets or make new gaskets or try to peel them off, take a little silicone spray lubricant and and douse them. Let the paper soak the silicone up. And get it in there. that's it.
Now I'm ready to go. Oh yeah, the fuel tank. I just cleaned off the surface rust. And gas cap I have to get. It's the same as a Gravely, and I went over to my Gravely, and that cap gas that gas cap is missing also. I guess I have to order two. And this is a cockamamie thing I caught together when I put this on. Still works. It's gonna stay. For now anyway. It's just a wood splitter. Over to the machine. Oh, this is a drag. I noticed this right here. If you can see that edge right there, it's puckered out, which means it'll never make a good seal. And, well, actually, it's on the intake side, it's not so bad. But um, if you put the carburetor up against it, See it rocks. Uh, can you see that there? Oh, my hands in the way. There we go. Down here. So I'm going to take care of that real quick. I want to save this gasket, and I would just take it in and put it on an anvil and just tap it flat. But I can't get the switch off without breaking it. And I want to save this gasket, and I can't flatten it out without smashing it. So I'll just carefully squeeze this gasket off of here. Take this, uh, this old dolly right here. That should work like that. Just a couple of taps. It's almost it already. I almost bought that engine from Harbor Freight. Maybe I will before this is over. Okay, that's it. Put a brake clean, clean it up a little bit. Spray's good. They must have pumped a couple of extra ounces in that can. Hmm. All right. Okay, so this is going to go like so. All right. Be back in a minute. Okay, I'm back. And if you look over here where the carburetor mounts, I'm going to leave this block on. But there's a groove that goes all the way around here my pencil in it all the way around goes all the way out and it's open on the bottom what is that for that is for a float vent and in the carburetor in the float um, gasoline is pulled out uh, through uh, a low pressure in the main jet where it's neck down um, causes a low pressure zone and the fuel is pulled out of the float bowl. In order for the fuel to keep moving it has to be vented. As the float changes in height it needs to have a vent and that vent is over here in this little recess right here. Inside there, way inside there is a tiny tiny little hole and if that hole gets plugged up the carburetor will run out of fuel, it'll run lean, the whole thing will run pretty bad. 
So I've seen it on other machines where this gets clogged up, like lawnmowers, gets clogged up with grass and dirt and stuff right in this groove right here, and it just doesn't run right. And um, it's not obvious. I mean, you could, you could pull the float apart a million times. If you don't clean this, it's never going to work right. Anyway, time to put it on. All right, I had a problem. Besides getting dark and being cold outside, I need an extra gasket. There is a heat shield and I need a gasket like this on either side of it. And these are the gaskets that came with it, but I need two of this one. And I could probably use another one of this one. So I don't have any gasket material around, <clears throat> but I have made gaskets out of other things before. So um, I have some stuff here, like right here, uh, regular paper. Here's uh, kind of a heavy cardstock. And well, let's get an idea how thick a gasket is. So here's my 1901 micrometer. Uh, it's a little old. Okay, that one says it's uh, 21 thousandths of an inch. All right, let's see how close the cardstock comes. Nine thousandths of an inch. All right, it's quite a bit thinner. Here's regular copy paper. It's gray copy paper. I picked this because there seems to be a lot of fiber in it. But this is probably a lot thinner. Let's see. Five thousandths of an inch. It's even thinner. All right. Sometimes I use paper bags. This is by Fresh, by Local. This is Adam's Supermarket. This is their bag. Let's see if this is going to be any good. Hmm. Six thousandths of an inch. Um, well, let's compare that to Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's bag. Let's see if this is any better. Six thousand, same thing. All right, and last and least is an old shirt box from Kohl's, and there seems to be a lot of fiber in this too. So let's have a look what this is. Twenty thousandths. Looks like this is going to be it. This one wins. So, how this works is like this. You take a piece of cardboard, cut it out to eight and a half by eleven. You bring it up to the printer, over to a printer, and you print the gaskets on it. Run it put the printer, put the gaskets in a printer and print it out. And then you cut them out. Which uh, I'm going to do right now. So let me get started. Marking out. 8.5 by 11. Okay, I'm going to cut this out, go to the printer, and I'll be right back. Okay, here they are, all printed. I can get ready cutting them. Oh, look at that, they just fold right off. No, not really, but these are my originals, which I'll keep handy in this box. And these, I'll just start cutting them out. The 
Printer trick works good. Of course, I don't need all of these, but it doesn't hurt to have a couple extras laying around, even if I don't cut them out. See right there is where it jammed in the printer first time. It needs a little help, like a little push. Okay, which one do I want? This one. It doesn't have to be as perfect on the outside as the original was, but it doesn't it doesn't hurt to try to be as accurate as you can be. And you have to be dead accurate on the inner part of it. So I'll cut these all out off camera, but you got this ancient hole punch. And you can put this right in here and see right where you gotta be. And this should line right up with the carburetor. Almost perfect, okay, good. Then the inner part, you could probably just go like this, go right around the whole thing. Because I could see the edge. Just nibble at it. You can always get a razor blade. Probably get one anyway, just to get this nice and straight and clean. But it's getting there, just with this. The other thing is, how can you make a gasket like this fuel resistant? I mean, right now it's just cardboard. What do I got up my sleeve that I could treat this with? And I'll show you in a second. I was going to do this off camera, but this is so easy. The only thing I haven't done yet is that hole right there. Which, um... Figure out how to do that. Okay, that should be good enough. See it that way. Give me a little bit more. Hole punchers like this are hard to find. Most of the stuff you get today is junk. This is like a real industrial tool. If Snap-on made one, it would make one that look like this. And this is a, a punch right number 45. But you can't find that on eBay. All right, so. Um, put a hole in here. Probably just a reamer. just a vent hole. I mean, I say it like it's not important, but it is important. A 
Okay, this should work. Now what I do next is is take a um, well Trader Joe's will work. Put this like this, and I use this product here, Permatex High Tack Gasket Sealant. This comes in a spray can. I don't have the spray can, but when I did, you just hit this like this because the spray can. This stuff in the spray can has a carrier with it and it's very thin and it just soaks into the paper. This is uh, still pretty thin. Let's see what it does. The spray can would turn the backside red. I don't know if this will turn the backside red or not. See how much it soaks in, but um, hmm. Well, I don't know if it's bleeding in there or not, but I'll put more in the side. I have to keep a lookout. It's good to have around this stuff in a spray can. This dries like a rubber cement, and when it's soaked into the paper, the paper becomes rubbery too. Alright, well, there's my gasket right here, and I'll just let this dry till tomorrow. Sun comes up again. Put this someplace out of the way right here. Yeah, that's not good. It's gonna help. I'll hang it right here. And let that dry. That's it. Till later.
I had a little camera glitch, but it's okay. This should all fit together. Okay. Looks like it's in there, alright. missing the fuel lines and the fuel and the gas tank gas tanks over there all right I'll be back in a minute I'm being yapped at by a min pincer big bad dog he's a cute dog sometimes let's see if this hose is long enough this is the fuel valve right here like that okay so this would go like this He gets like that. Bark, 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 bark. Everything's a threat to a little dog. Okay, gotta tighten that up. And this spring down here holds tension against the governor so that it doesn't over rev. And there's a hole over here someplace. If I can see it. Well, there it is right there. That's easy. Okay, and let's see, screwdriver. Torque driver. Here we go. That should be good. Okay, next thing is the fuel filter. Extra gasket. If 
fuel filter and some fuel hose. Is this good or is this kinked? Uh, I don't really like it. I like the original hose better. Seems to be all right. All right, I'm gonna save the battery on this camera and I'm gonna put the other hose back on. See you in a minute. Oh, that stupid dog won't shut up. I don't know whether to kill him now or shoot him later. I guess I'll shoot him later. Okay, time for the fuel tank to go back on. This is a uh, homemade conversion thing here. I have a screwdriver somewhere. If you take the Phillips point out, this fits right on there. It's 5 16 After the squirrels ate this. I was upset. Honda wanted like 60 bucks for a fuel tank. I was like, what the hell? If it was made of metal, the squirrels couldn't have eaten it. Anyway. I use chair pads on the side in here to just help a little bit, help stick it in place. Uh-oh, here he comes again. Ah, oh, geez, Stewie, go away. Let's see which one do I want, this one or that one? I think I need the bigger one over here. Now the fuel filter is there. Shut up, Stewie. Make too much noise. it in the house. I'll be back. So I just stuck that together like that just to um, get it to work. So I got the tank on, got the fuel line on, got the choke and everything set up, the air filters off, and I'm going to check the oil, see how the oil's doing, and see if it starts. So there's oil in it. Needs an oil change, that's for sure.
Let me go find some gasoline. Gas cans. They're the worst things ever designed. Oh, great, now it's broken. Plastics in a tank. Uh, they have real nice replacement nozzles at Tractor Supply. They're pricey. I think they're like eleven dollars a piece. I have them on one of the tanks around here somewhere. But not this one. Shouldn't use ethanol in these engines, but I gotta travel 20 miles to get gasoline without ethanol in it. So it is what it is. Fuel lines open. Carburetor should be filling up as I pour this in. It's almost full. Oh shit. Ah, let's see if it sparks anyway. Choke on. Maybe tomorrow. Okay. That proves it'll run. I just have to get a fitting for the fuel tank and I'm in business. Change the oil, fix a flat tire, and that's it. Till next time. All right, I'm back. I started assembling this already. Oops, there goes the gasket.
the gasket that I made is is under here under this metal plate this is a factory gasket and so is this one and this goes on somehow I think like this that looks about right and I was trying to figure out where to put the um, the linkage so here's the old one one hole is for a spring the other hole is for the rod so I looked at the old carburetor and you can see that one hole is quite a bit bigger and worn compared to the other so the inner hole is for the rod and I uh, hope it fits so let's see how this goes this is an insulator block keeps the carburetor from getting hot and here's the rod I want to attach and it fits okay good one last thing I think this rod has to come be on the other side of this wire spring goes on I should go inside the rod oh damn okay the spring goes the rod goes through the spring Let me make sure I get that right because this doesn't work I'm throwing the whole damn thing out and getting that motor from Harbor Freight Alright, you see this little wiry spring, and this rod goes right through it, like so. And there's a worn area right there. I don't know if you can see that, but I can. And that's kind of where the spring sits. So, it doesn't really do much. It keeps it from rattling. It's just a rattle spring. I would still be buying snap-on pliers if they still had the vacuum grip on here. But they don't, so I don't. All right, get back where I was. Over here, gasket back on. Rod goes in under the wire. What are you idiots doing? Stewie, get a toy. Get a toy, Stewie. Get a toy, Stewie. All right, 
I got a fuel line. I found copper fuel lines at Advanced Auto. And I have this fitting I'm going to put in the tank. And I have to figure out how this is all going to work. So what I want to do is have a gas line over here. Have this gas line in here someplace. And this fuel line from here, I guess here out and in. So maybe uh, a small bend, I'm thinking come out, and then a small bend in, and then I can put the fuel filter on. So I'm going to make the bend first, I think. Let me take this off. Put the fitting on. Hmm. Okay. Um, a lot of people think this Indian head cement is junk, but I'll tell you what, sometimes, sometimes you have a tool in the drawer that you only use once in a while, and this is it. It's not bad stuff, especially for this. Put a little dab right around here on the threads. Just screwed it right in there. And I want this to go all the way back. Just find a wrench for that. That one should work. That was easy. All right. I don't want to go another turn because that would be over tight. And I want this to go straight out that way or out this way. Actually, I want this. It's even better. Straight out like that. And just bend this in. So... If you have a bending pipe, make sure to put the threads at the end of the pipe because after you bend it, you can't unbend it. And this is a little tool. First time I'm using it, I got it from Harbor Freight. And this works like this. Looks like that size right there. I can grab it as far out in the end as I can get it. And hook this part up over it. And give it a tweak. 90 degrees ought to work. That looks good right there. I have a bend. Now I want to cut it. So it goes like so. So I guess I want it right about here. I could always make it shorter. And the best, my best pipe cutter is this one for now. It's a big Lennox. It's my newest anyway. It's got a sharp wheel on it. But it might not want to cut something so small. Let's see. Oh, it looks like it'll work. So that sharp wheel here cuts a groove in the pipe as I rotate this around. And you just have to add a little bit more. And this is copper pipe, which is nice. Although this pipe cutter works just as good on steel pipe, like brake line pipe. And this is brake line pipe. It has a flare. Actually, it's called a double flare. There it goes. Alright, and if you see, this, this can't come off. It's stuck there. And that hole right there should be reamed out a little bit. Normally this, this tool has uh, this part on it. It's a little knife kind of that it's for cleaning copper pipe that you use in plumbing. But that's too big for this. So I have something else. Somewhere over here. 
over here is the reamer. This tool here is used for reaming out holes that you drill if you need them a little bit bigger or you want to take a burr off, but it's pointy enough it should fit right in here. Clean out this. It's nice and open now. I'll put this on here. Tighten it up a little bit. Three eighths. fat for this. It's all right. And then a gas filter somewhere. The fuel should go in this way so you can see any sediment in here. If you put it this way, the sediment is inside the paper and you can't see it. So the flow should go like that from the tank to the carburetor. And then I just need a little itty bitty piece from here to there. So this should work like this. Do I like it? I think I do. It's workable. Let's tighten it up and see what it looks like.
quite like that angle right there. That's good. I like that though. It's out of the way. It's nice. All right. Now it's time for some more gasoline. Again, the gasoline fiasco. Crappy top is no good at all. Piece of junk. That should be a good start right there. New cap. Hmm. See the fuel bowl filling up. All right. Okay, let's see what happens. Save the ether. Let's see what happens now. Pull the choke a little bit. This way. 